Jennifer Connelly has long ceased to be just a Hollywood actress. The epithets applicable to her can be listed endlessly. She has gifted audiences with a great number of memorable on-screen portrayals. She was a striking model, repeatedly made the list of the most beautiful women on the planet, sang in Japanese, and is simply one of my favorite Hollywood actresses. In short, as you've already guessed, this video will be about Jennifer Connelly. Enjoy the show. Jennifer Connelly was born on December 12, 1970 in New York. Jennifer was introduced to show business at an early age. When she was 11, a friend of her father's who worked in advertising suggested her parents send Jennifer's photo to an advertising agency, which ended up hiring her as a model. Her modeling career took off rapidly. She appeared in a large number of advertising projects, both on television and in various tabloids. Noticing the hype around their daughter, Jennifer's parents actively took her to various auditions for television projects. Though she didn't make it onto television, instead, she debuted on the big screen. A stroke of luck played a significant part in this. Concurrently with Connolly going through numerous auditions, Sergio Leone began filming his movie Once Upon a Time in America. The director was looking for an actress who could play the character of Deborah in scenes of her childhood, a role performed by Elizabeth McGovern in adulthood. Due to the physical resemblance between Connolly and McGovern, Jennifer was ultimately cast. Although her role was minor and not memorable at the time, it did allow her to bypass the period of shooting various TV shows and begin appearing on the big screen right away. In 84, Connolly landed the lead role in the Italian Swiss horror film Phenomena. The film was mainly shown in European theaters and didn't attract much attention, but nonetheless, it received quite good reviews. Parallel to her acting career, the actress didn't forget about the modeling business. Connolly was especially popular in Japan, where she appeared in numerous commercials. Upon returning from Japan, she landed the lead role in two Hollywood projects. Her first major Hollywood film was Seven Minutes in Heaven. Unfortunately, the film couldn't boast high ratings or box office numbers, gathering just $30,000. Things were much better regarding the ratings for the film Labyrinth, released the same year, where she starred alongside David Bowie. Despite high ratings, the box office numbers were disappointing, with the film collecting only $12 million on a $25 million budget. But nevertheless, the actress's performance was noted positively by many. Not only audiences and critics, but also the film's director. Jim Henson and producer George Lucas were enchanted by Connolly, confessing that it took them only a couple of minutes to cast her for the role. Despite all the rave reviews and recognition, both from audience and critics, Connolly's film career developed quite methodically. But one fact should be considered here. At the time of the release of Labyrinth, the actress was only 16 years old and still in school. While most actors of this age are just coming to the realization that they want to tie their lives to cinema, Connolly already had experience working with major Hollywood studios. However, despite this, the actress was in no hurry to dive headfirst into the film industry. After finishing school, she enrolled at Yale University, where she studied English language and dramatic art. But Jennifer's enjoyment of student life was short-lived, and after two years of studying, she dropped out at her parents' advice and focused on her acting career, which can't be said to have developed rapidly. After her fairly noticeable child roles, Connolly appeared on screen as a naive, carefree girl, and naturally, this typecast led her straight to rom-coms. But despite a large number of projects in this genre, her roles rarely truly captivated critics and audiences. Her first departure from the rom-com genre occurred in 1991 when she starred in the adaptation of the comic The Rocketeer. But Connolly's first encounter with superheroism was not very successful. The film demonstrated only moderate interest from the audience and managed to gross $46 million on a $35 million budget. An even less successful experience for the actress was her role in the film Love and Shadows, in which she starred alongside Antonio Banderas. The film was received very coolly by audiences, and critics decided not to even honor the film with their attention. The lack of interest from the audience in films starring the actress led to more frequent offers from studios for secondary roles. One such project was Inventing the Abbots, in which Joaquin Phoenix, Billy Crudup, and Liv Tyler also starred. The film's low box office returns were in stark contrast to its ratings, and the ensemble of young actors was for many viewers the biggest plus of the film. The discrepancy between box office returns and audience ratings became a distinguishing feature of films featuring Connolly. 
This trend continued in 98 when Dark City was released. The director of the film was Alex Proyas, who had already made a name for himself with The Crow and had not yet made iRobot. The film, like previous works featuring Connolly, did not gain much popularity at the box office, collecting only $27 million on a matching budget. However, both audiences and the majority of critics called Dark City one of the best films of that year. Later, the film even attained the status of a classic in science fiction. Notably, Dark City left not only a cultural legacy, but also a material one. The film's sets were later used in the filming of The Matrix, released just a year later. Both films were conceptually similar, but the popularity of the films was incomparable. The Matrix was able to bolster its status as a cultural phenomenon with substantial box office returns, becoming an unequivocal blockbuster, while Dark City was content with only positive reviews from audiences and critics. Nevertheless, Connolly's participation in Dark City marked a turning point in her career. Viewers were convinced that Jennifer could perform not only in lighthearted rom-coms, but also handle serious dramatic roles excellently. Not only the viewers noticed this, but also, then unknown, Darren Aronofsky, who was looking for a lead actress for his new film, Requiem for a Dream. However, Connolly did not get into the project immediately. Initially, the role of the heroine named Marion was offered to Neve Campbell, but she declined to participate in the film when she learned that she would have to appear nude in one of the scenes. As for Connolly, the nudity in that shot did not bother her, and she ultimately got the role. The film's release could not be called successful, and it collected only $7 million, but it received extremely high ratings, becoming one of the best films in Connolly's career. Requiem for a Dream became a Rubicon of sorts for the actress, after crossing which, no one associated her with rom-coms and love melodramas any longer. The subsequent film, A Beautiful Mind, only solidified the success of her new persona. Ron Howard's film was one of the main events in the film industry in 2001. The enthusiastic reviews from both viewers and critics were complemented by a substantial box office return of $313 million on a budget of $88 million, making A Beautiful Mind the first financially successful film in Connolly's career. Besides audience love, the actress's performance was recognized by the American Film Academy, which awarded Connolly an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Like the beginning of Connolly's film career, she also got into A Beautiful Mind not without a stroke of luck. Initially, the producers did not even consider her candidacy for participation in the film, and the actress ended up at the audition accidentally, coming to help Jared Leto audition for the main male role. During the audition, she read the script of the film's heroine Alicia. Jared Leto was rejected by the producers who preferred Russell Crowe, but Jennifer Connelly, on the contrary, impressed them, and she was ultimately cast as Alicia. In addition to rave reviews and universal acclaim, the role in A Beautiful Mind also changed the actress's personal life. During the filming of the movie, she met actor Paul Bettany, with whom she's been married for 20 years and is raising two children. After the success of A Beautiful Mind, Connolly decided to try her hand again at superhero films, starring in Hulk with Eric Bana. But the first big-budget adaptation of The Green Superhero's Adventures failed to find much love from the audience and collected $245 million at the box office on a $170 million budget, and garnering only mediocre reviews. Completely disillusioned with superhero films, the actress returned to a genre in which she felt much more comfortable. In 2003, she again wowed audiences with her performance, co-starring with Ben Kingsley in the drama House of Sand and Fog. The long-forgotten curse of movies featuring the actress seemed to return. The film garnered excellent reviews from both audiences and critics, but collected only $16 million at the box office on a matching budget. In my opinion, this became one of the most undeservedly overlooked films featuring the actress. The trend of American remakes of Japanese horror films that emerged after the success of The Ring did not bypass Jennifer Connelly either. And in 2005, the actress played the lead role in Dark Water. Unfortunately, aside from featuring Jennifer Connelly, the film had little else to boast about. Most of the audience did not resonate with the Hollywood interpretation of Japanese horror and rated the film quite averagely. After that, there began another period of films that thrilled audiences but brought tears to the producer's eyes when looking at the box office returns. First, the film Little Children, co-starring Patrick Wilson and Kate Winslet, marked a box office flop. 
That same year, the film Blood Diamond, despite having DiCaprio in it, performed rather poorly at the box office, collecting $170 million on a $100 million budget. Next, Inkheart was noted for its empty theaters, although it's worth mentioning that Jennifer Connelly had a secondary role in the film, while the leading role in an attempt to save his career was performed by the now Oscar-bearing Brendan Fraser. The drama Reservation Road, released in 2007, ironically became a forbidden road for viewers to the theaters, collecting only $1.5 million on an $11 million budget. The streak of commercial failures was broken in 2008, with the release of The Day the Earth Stood Still, in which the actress starred alongside Keanu Reeves. The film, unlike the actress's previous works, performed decently at the box office, collecting $230 million on an $80 million budget. Although this time, the reviews left something to be desired. In the same year, dusting off the rom-com genre from the shelf, the actress decided to try her hand again at the heroine of romantic comedies, joining the star-studded cast of He's Just Not That Into You. And this time, high box office takings and good audience ratings once again converged. The film, with a budget of $40 million, grossed $180 million in theaters and received mostly positive reviews. The actress's new experience in voicing animated films can also be called a success. In 2009, she voiced one of the characters in the animated film, Nine, which received good audience ratings. In that same year, the actress appeared on screen again with her husband Paul Bettany, starring in the drama Creation, and despite decent audience ratings, the film crashed at the box office, collecting only $900,000 on a budget of $10 million. A similar fate befell her next works, including the film Virginia, Salvation Boulevard, The Dilemma, and Stuck in Love. Taking a couple of years off from the film industry, the actress returned to cinema in 2014, acting in four films at once. The first of which was Darren Aronofsky's Noah. The film was banned in several countries, a list that naturally wouldn't be complete without China. Nevertheless, the film managed to collect $360 million at the box office, making Noah the highest grossing film in Aronofsky's career, and at the same time, his lowest rated work, as the film did not appeal to all viewers. After Noah, Connolly ventured into the fairy tale world in the film Winter's Tale, which despite having stars like Russell Crowe, Colin Farrell, and Will Smith on board, managed to crash at the box office, collecting only $30 million on a budget of $60 million. Also in 2014, the actress played the leading role in her husband Paul Bettany's directorial debut, Shelter. The film had limited release and failed to impress much of its audience. Another less successful directorial debut involving the actress was Ewan McGregor's American Pastoral, which released two years later. This time, the film reached a wider audience, but it didn't help much and the movie only managed to collect $2 million. In 2017, the creative path once again led the actress to superhero movies, though this time she chose to limit herself to only providing the voice, lending her voice to an artificial intelligence named Karen in the film Spider-Man Homecoming. That same year, the actress played a supporting role in the movie Only the Brave, which performed well in terms of ratings but flopped at the box office, collecting $26 million on a budget of $38 million. After this, the actress took another break from cinema to spend more time with her family, returning two years later in Robert Rodriguez's Alita Battle Angel. This time, there were no discrepancies between the film's box office earnings and its ratings. The film performed reasonably well at the box office, collecting $400 million, and was liked by both audiences and critics. And of course, the actress's filmography wouldn't be complete without a Netflix project. For Connolly, this project was the series Snowpiercer, which was quite well received by viewers. In 2022, the premiere of Top Gun Maverick took place, which, in terms of ratings and box office revenue, became the most successful work in Connolly's career. With a budget of $140 million, the film grossed $1.5 billion at the box office, which to me seems like a sort of compensation for that long list of excellent films featuring the actress that flopped out the box office in their time. Currently, the actress has again decided to take a break from filming, and at the moment, there are no confirmed projects in her list of films. Jennifer Connelly, starting her acting career at an early age, has undergone, it seems to me, an organic transformation of her on-screen persona. As the actress matured, so did her roles in movies. They became more serious and profound, each time expanding the boundaries of her talent. And there is a certain degree of unfairness in that. Having a large number of excellent films behind her, Connolly never became a box office actress. But I think for any viewer who genuinely loves cinema, 
financial collections never indicated the quality of a film, or even more, the talent of an actor in it. On that note, I'll end my video. This was the story of Jennifer Connelly. If you liked the video, don't forget to give a like and subscribe, and let us know which Connelly film was your favorite in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.